Why are so many people hating on the UFC Noche card? I'm going to give you five reasons. These reasons may coincide, but nonetheless, reason number one, it's at the sphere. How is the UFC going to pull this off when it's in this ball-like structure owned by the owners of Madison Square Garden that erected this giant structure of a ball-like arena? We are going to find out just how crazy or uncrazy this might be. Is it going to bomb or is it going to be this great spectacle that will make you feel like you're there as Dana White is saying? He's saying there's going to be a movie playing throughout the fight card before and after each and every fight chronologically explaining the Mexican fighters of the past, the present, and the future who graced the boxing ring and the UFC octagon, which I think is great. It's a love letter to Mexico, but more on that later. Nonetheless, he's just promising so many things and an Easter egg hunt throughout the movies that are going to be playing in the fight night. And if you find the Easter egg hunt, the winner gets $25,000. Reason number two, the fight card is super, super mid. Dana White has been promising since UFC 300, even this card, that this is going to be the greatest night of fights in UFC history. But the cards, on paper at least, have been super, super mid. Aside from Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Mirab Doavis Philly, which is a great fight. It's the right fight that needs to happen in the bantamweight division. I'm super excited for that fight. I'm really intrigued by that fight. Alexa Grasso, Valentina Shevchenko, that is a big fight for the women's flyweight division and for women's MMA in general. And Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez, whom Brian Ortega pulled out the last time these guys were slated to fight back at UFC 303 on June 29th. I'm scared that Brian Ortega is going to pull out either the day before or the day of this fight week, even though he had a full training camp. Aside from those three fights, this fight card is an apex card at best. This is not a fight card you should take $80 and put to your ESPN Plus account. Albeit, yes, it is a love letter to Mexico, but aside from all these other fighters that are on the card, the only recognizable face on this card is Raul Rosas Jr., who is a rising superstar, and he's not even allowed to drink yet. You know the fighters who should have been on this card? Yair Rodriguez. You know the fighters who should have been on this card? Brandon Moreno. Matter of fact, although he classifies as Brazilian and he's smashing a Brazilian every night, Henry Cejudo versus Brandon Moreno could have easily headlined this card because of the storyline that they have, because of the bad blood that they have, because they were once friends that turned into bitter rivals. That would have been the perfect fight for this card. It didn't even have to be headlined by a title, and I think we would have all been happy with that. But no, we have to have a title headlined by an Irish dude, an Irish American, Sean O'Malley, and Marab Dwalavis Philly, who is Georgian, who is American. These dudes aren't Mexicans. And this one commenter on a post said it perfectly. Mexican Independence Day fight card hosted by an American company, sponsored by a Middle East company, and will be headlined by an American and Georgian. I hate the fact that the Saudis sponsored it, but hey, if it's costing Dana White $20 million, then I get it. You need to do everything you can to fund this event, but don't make it that it's a love letter to Mexico when the Saudis are involved. Why can't us Latinos have something of ours that belongs to us from beginning to end? Reason number four. Reason number three was it's not headlined by Mexicans. Reason number four is these insane ticket prices that have been this entire story leading up to this fight card. The tickets were listed at $3,000 a piece, and that was just for the nosebleeds. And it was announced the past week that they barely even halfway sold out the arena, and now they had the lower ticket prices to where the cheapest was $3,000, and it's now $7,000. So say you and your buddies go, there's three of you, and you want to go to the fight. That's $2,100 between the three of you, not including travel expenses, jumping on a plane, which is not cheap, not including hotel expenses, which is not cheap, especially the same night as a Canelo fight, more on that later, it's not cheap. Plus, you want to get food, you want to get yourself some Mexican street corn, you want to get yourself some Barilla tacos, you want to get yourself some chips and salsa, you want to get yourself a sarape, you want to get yourself a sombrero, you want to get yourself a poncho. You got to get all that being Mexican Independence Day weekend because our culture is just the best culture out there. So you factor in all those situations and you're going to be dead broke and you're looking at a one-way ticket back home from Las Vegas and you're going to have to literally get a day job out there just to afford a ticket to go back to your hometown. Reason number five, will the Canelo fight have a giant effect on this card? Pay-per-view buys and being in attendance wise because T-Mobile Arena is hosting the Canelo fight and the Sphere is hosting this fight, obviously. 
Canelo is a giant star in his own right, and rightfully so. He is probably the second greatest Mexican boxer to come out of Mexico. There's no debate about that. But with him going head-to-head with the UFC, which has been done before, I don't know if you remember five years ago, almost five years ago, when Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz were fighting in New York, Canelo was fighting at MGM Grand, and Canelo had to wait for Jorge and Nate to finish fighting because they were showing the Jorge and Nate Diaz fight on the big screen at MGM Grand, which was absolutely insane that you have to make the biggest star in Mexico right now wait to go out and fight somebody who we don't even know. It's crazy. But I will say that I think the UFC will do better throughout this portion of the fight week, mainly because it's something that's never been done. And I think people are curious, all right, is the UFC going to fall flat on its face because they're doing something that hasn't been done? Or are they going to prosper and rise above all the doubt and all the hate and give us the greatest sporting spectacle that has ever been seen? 